Welcome to Appalachian Bonsai. It's been a while since I posted the last video. I want to update you on some trees and some other projects we're working on. Thanks for sticking around. What I have here is the viburnum that we collected. See, it's coming into its fall color and did just fine this year. No issues. This coming spring, I'll end up probably wiring these down after the leaves have hardened some. That way, at least they're placed into position as they get older and thicker. I can go ahead and prune some of these back. It's these upper branches that are the ones that uh, are very strong growers. So those are the ones that I really need to prune back hard. These bottom ones right here, those need to be the stronger growing branches. So it's good to distribute the energy from this top back down. Uh, where I'm pruning, I have a bud here, I have a bud here, bud here, bud here. I'm gonna prune it right there, these buds about halfway between the nodes for any dieback. Same thing with this guy, I've got a bud here, I've got a bud there, I'm gonna print it right in the middle there. And this upper guy, I'm probably gonna leave that guy and let it go strong. You know, that way it'll thicken up and allow for a taper. I'll probably end up bringing it down here, but you know what, it's fine. So this is the horn beam. It's got all that beautiful movement. We've got those nice flutes in here. It grew really healthy and that makes me happy. Um, I did not wire again this springtime. Just let it grow. It didn't need to be pruned. Just let it regain its vigor, its health. I'm going to prune some of these guys down here at the bottom. And what that is is uh, I don't need them. You know, the suckers are nice if you need to create flare or if you need to, for instance, say, close up a wound. Uh, utilize these little guys to uh, help bring that callus over the top of it. But I don't need that down here. So I'm going to prune those off and allow the, the upper section to grow. A few more cuts. And we've got nice little nodes all up back and forth on this guy. This one, because I'm not deciding, I'm not sure, I'm just going to prune it back there. It's a nice little whip here. Um, little thin branch. Little thin branch. There we go. This will get nice and bushy again, all over again. You know what? We'll just go ahead and do that. It's another horn beam that we collected this year in the uh, horn beam collection video. Horn beams and beeches are very similar in that often their leaves can, uh, can linger through wintertime and it makes for a very dramatic display whenever you have all these leaves that are still lingering or even some that have dropped from the top and the bottom still remain. Anyway, let's go ahead and prune this guy up. I have really strong growth here. It to die back. Branches on the back side. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring those a little bit larger. I'm going to bring that guy down. Crazy strong growth here. I don't like the way this comes back up, so I'm going to take that off completely. This whole branch might end up going. I'm still debating. Just letting it do its thing. Um, one at the bottom. Take that off. I've got a little inner branch right here, which you might be able to catch leave that there. Uh, dead branch here. Let that break. This branch, if I decide to let that go a little bit stronger, I want it to go out. This branch right here is kind of going back into the tree. This one is as well, but that can be pruned back. This one, on the other hand, I want to let it go that way. So that's gone. I'm still going to prune it up a little bit high. That'll be my leader coming up. I was hoping for some uh, for branches coming up on this side and this side, but I did not get them. Anyway, that's all for that one. Here's the dogwood that we did this spring. Showed the video, I guess, back in June or July. This particular tree, during the course of the summer, had a little bit of, uh, I believe it's called white mildew, and so I ended up using a little bit of a copper fungicide, and that took care of it. Uh, otherwise, it was nice and healthy. I have a cluster down here of various branches. I'm going to go ahead and clear those out and uh, different nodes. I'm going to get the camera here in a second. I can show you what I'm doing. We have these clusters of branches. Very large cluster here. Um, this is not a very strong branch. I'm going to clear that guy out in the middle. It's a little whirl. This guy's going to be crossing a little bit. I'm going to take that out. And you know what? I, I like the strong growth of this one, so I'm going to leave that one. And take this one. 
and that one right there. Take that guy. I'm going to leave my strong one here. A little die back with that white mildew that didn't make me happy. Um, this one right here. Here's that beautiful hawthorn. This is the green hawthorn. See all these guys. We can get some of that soil. The thing about hawthorns, which I did not know when I first started working on these, is that they can sometimes get what's called cedar apple rust or cedar quince rust. This is a member of the rose family, which is the same as the apples. Apples are also part of the rose family, and they are susceptible to a disease called cedar apple rust. Two tree species, two different species, are required to make that happen. One is an apple species such as this, and the other being a juniper, which we have as, uh, we call it eastern red cedar here in uh, Virginia of USA. Uh, but it is actually a juniper species, Juniperus virginiana. It takes effect in both trees. It requires the, each of them in order to cycle. So I've got a little bit on this one right there. That's all it did on this particular one. That was it. So we're going to go ahead and prune it up real quick. If you can see this, let's grab this camera. This little guy's got buds all up and down this thing. All these do, and they're really short nodes. I like that. You know, they'll get even shorter when I start ramifying these guys down. But with just letting this guy grow, you can see it's got little buds all over the place. This tree's healthy. That makes me happy. There you have it. That some people ask me about my benches. Well, I'm still living in a place that uh, needed a lot of work when my wife and I moved here. So I don't have a proper bench that's really nice to see. But I'm gonna show you a few of the trees that I have uh, kept for a long time, some that I've just acquired, and we'll discuss them a little bit more. This is a Fitzer juniper. This is one of the first trees that I got when I got into this hobby. It's not even really the best material now that I see these things uh, with more mature eyes. This back and forth here is not very natural for this species, but I still like it. It got its uh, fall time pruning this year. What I've done here is I've just laid the branches back down again, opened them up. You can see here, they've been opened up a little bit, and hopefully fill this guy out some. There's, there's not a determined front or back. That would look better for a front maybe because it's open on the front side and then you have some foliage over here on the back side. Not bad. This is a Virginia juniper. This is the one that uh, is my avatar. And you can see the amazing growth that it had this year. It got transplanted into a, a new pot and had quite a bit of growth. Uh, I might go ahead and prune this up and make a video of that later. This particular tree is also the one that has a problem with cedar apple rust. This is one of the roots of cedar apple rust, this being the cedar part of it. They call it red cedar. It's a Virginia juniper. I keep this tree and the hawthorns separated. This was taken out of a cow field, and this was all natural. I haven't done anything to touch that. This, on the other hand, is all bent and pruned up. I'm trying to bring that back down. We'll see how well that works. Speaking of farm fields, here's the privet. That was uh, shown earlier this year in a, in a spring update video. I did let these suckers grow out. We also have one on the back, and you may not say that's a good looking thing, but I'm just trying to thicken it up. I did not cut the branches, I left them uh, and let them grow along. Why not? I can decide later, and I will. Here's one I'm excited about. This is a Rocky Mountain juniper collected in Colorado. Uh, I believe it was collected by Nick Lenz and it was sold to me by Jim Doyle up at Nature's Way Nursery in Pennsylvania. Jim Doyle is a 40-year uh, bonsai veteran. He's a wonderful delight to watch and listen, as well as a, a great, great trainer and grower of bonsai. This was done at a workshop at the North Carolina Arboretum. They had their annual bonsai expo in October, and I have video of that that I will be showing uh, as soon as I can get it edited. But there was a workshop that we did with Jim Doyle 
and I use this tree. This is a very large uh, canopy. Here's a picture of it. And I went ahead and ginned several of these branches that I didn't think were particularly good. Uh, this branch right here, which you may see on the camera, had no growth up until this point. And that was a long distance for me to be able to try and bend back or work into. And uh, same with some of these others. What I ended up doing with this, though, is coming down about like that. There we go. Lines that I've written in kind of a marker crayon, shows my horizontal that I trained it at. Also has a vertical here. That way I can orient this again when it comes to repot. This, according to Jim, should not be repotted for another two years. This is a wild collected piece of material. It's old. Its root system is not like that of young trees. It's been in this pot for about three or four years. And he said to make sure that after this first styling, it needs to recover and to give it at least two years before I repot. Soil is still draining very well, which means there's plenty of room for it to grow, and I can trust that this tree will be just fine. All the branches and leaves falling. Happy autumn, everybody.